Okay. Looks like we're live. Uh, um, there's always a, 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 a slight delay, uh, and I wonder where we're at. So, um, hello, Slots Enthusiasts. How are you? It's great to hang out with you again for another Professor Slots podcast episode and live stream. Today, we'll be diving into a question I'd gotten during a consultation with a client. The question was, are there people that make a living playing slot machines? That's coming up. <clears throat> Hi, my name is John Friedel. Welcome to Professor Slots, a channel that's all about mastering casino slots so you can win your way to success. If you've ever walked into a casino, looked around, and wondered what's going on with slots and more, I can help. Thanks again for joining us today. Whether you're listening on the podcast, watching this video later, or here with us on the live stream at noon Eastern time each Saturday. I'm glad you're all here. But first, if you're uh, with us during the live stream, make sure to say hello to everyone in the live chat. Some people um, are regulars, some are new. Uh, and so uh, let us know where you're at or, or where you play slots. I'll check in with the live chat in a little bit. And as always, be sure to ask your slots related questions. <clears throat> Uh, today's topic is based on a conversation I had with a member of my audience, whom I'll just call RS, um, where RS asked, are there people that make a living playing slot machines? Uh, we had a bit of a conversation. I've invited, invited him here today. He's here uh, on, the live, on the live chat, um, and uh, which nobody else can see unless you're actually here um, during the live stream. So I thought, what an excellent question. I thought other slots enthusiasts might also be interested in this, this topic, so I wrote an article on it, which I published yesterday evening called Five Ways to Make a Living Playing Slots. I'm still working on producing the video, but it should be finished and uploaded in a few days, perhaps as early as maybe today, but probably tomorrow, um, Monday at the latest. Uh, See lots of familiar names in the uh, live chat that's uh, scrolling past my eyes. I um, uh, wanted to thank Paula uh, for being today's moderator in the live chat uh, so she can keep an eye on things. We've had some um, interesting non-humans show up, <laughs> robots or something, I don't know. <laughs> um, and so she's uh, keeping uh, an eye on uh, the situation for us. Um, uh, and uh, so getting back to the topic, uh, uh, since I published the article only last night, you might not have seen it yet. Now this only applies uh, to people on the live stream, basically. Uh, it won't be very long uh, before the video is available, a day or two, um, which means you could probably find it if you're watching this recording later. Um, in fact, if you let, excuse me, if you let the video end, YouTube has allows me a way to uh, let the next video that plays be something of my choice. And so I'll, I'll make the next video that plays that video. Uh, if you're on, uh, if you're a listener of the podcast, uh, well, as you know, the first part of the podcast episode that you're listening to, which should be number 101, um, was actually, I went over that article. So uh, probably the people that are worst off is the people in the live chat because uh, it only came out last night. Um, and uh, 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 Paula, uh, yes, Paula was kind enough to post uh, the link in the live chat, um, and uh, but but again, since I only published it last night, you might not have seen it, might not have seen it, depending on how you're listening to this or watching this. As always, if you want to know what's in the post, uh, you'll have to go take a look at it. Uh, I'll put the link in the description of this video, as well as in the show notes uh, for those uh, um, those podcast listeners, um, but also. Uh, Paula put it in the live chat. So um, again, as always, it is not my intent to spoil it for you here. Um, I, I, I don't intend to, to, to just read you the article. Um, uh, that's what the article is for. That is what the video is for. That is what the podcast episode um, before this portion of episode 101 is about. But I did want to talk about it. I did want to talk about during today's uh, talk about it during today's show. Um, 
Uh, I see lots of things in the chat. <laughs> it's, it's always great when it's uh, uh, so busy um, uh, uh, live, uh, but it does. Uh, that's why I have a helper now. Um, uh, we have more than the usual number. Uh, for those of you who are looking for Chip Baron, as he calls himself here, here on um, uh, YouTube, uh, he gambles uh, Saturday mornings, and so he... Uh, Apparently, he's not able to make the chat. Um, maybe that will change um, uh, in the future because he was able to make it for a while. Uh, when we moved from 2 o'clock in the afternoon to noon a month or so ago, uh, apparently it's not working out as well for him. And he always had a lot to say. Um, in any case, uh, for this article, um, it's I don't. I don't want to, I don't try to duplicate my published content here. Uh, but sometimes there's questions or perhaps more accurately unexplored avenues of discussion. In other, in other words, what didn't I talk about? So let's talk about what I didn't talk about. Um, in the article, I, I briefly touch on poker players that make a living uh, that, well, um, this is actually, I have something to say for a little while here, um, but I think this might be a good time to check the live chat uh, just to see what's spilling over. Um, uh, I'll quickly run through some of the content here. Um, lots of hellos. Um, I'm, I'm usually here about 10 to 15 minutes before the show starts, um, before we start recording uh, and uh, chatting with people. So some of that took place in a lot of uh Family, friends, and friends um, are here. Steve, uh, uh, RS is here. Uh, Lois and Dave, family, friends. Larry from UK. Chuck, uh, St. Louis. Paula, our moderator, um, uh, is here. Let's see. Joe is here. He he moved to Arizona. Um, he'd been planning on do that, doing that. That was tough. Uh, Jeffrey from Maine is here. Uh, uh, Greener Pastures, um, Wisconsin, right? Uh, Wise Virgin, uh, which is Richard from Western uh, uh, North Carolina. Uh, he plays at uh, Harris Cherokee. Uh, a lot of the regulars, uh, some new people. Uh, Dave Odom uh, is, hopefully I pronounced that correct, is here. Um, he's in uh, Salem, Oregon. Uh, so we're getting, uh, well, more than just the United States. We've got Canada, uh, UK, and across the U.S., um, Uh, so uh, RS is saying uh, if I if you if I want his information about how about going playing slots and try to make it li living before the pandemic, I don't mind sharing that information with you. Um, thank you, RS. Uh, we have been talking on the live stream along uh, a, a lot about how to about a, how to win at different places, um, and uh, you know I think the best place for you to share that would be in our Facebook community. So I have one for every state, um, and uh, you know go to your state. I, you, that's where I you know found you. So that that's the best place because there you can see photos. The live stream that we have um, there's a live chat and I like to keep that private so the only time anybody can ever see the live chat is if they're here for the live stream uh, as you are and um, so you know the 15 concurrent viewers that are right now here for the live stream would see that but not the 700 who would be watching it later so uh, this isn't the best place for that is and there's no really no way to show pictures and, and whatnot or even have much of a conversation because you're limited to high white characters anyway technical difficulties aside I think the community might be the best best place to share that if you'd care to share it with everybody or just send me a message I'm interested but uh, this might not be the best place for it and I'm not you know, distracted as I sometimes get because RS is here with us. Uh, um, and the audio is good. Great. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, uh, so I'll leave um, RS to put something in the chat. Um, just be aware that uh, I'm not likely to see it uh, because we're doing things live here. Um, but, uh, you know, feel free. Um, there's a <laughs> method to my madness, honest. Um, so uh, let's talk about what we didn't talk about in the article. Uh, uh, yeah, so um, in the article, I briefly touch on poker players that make a living that way uh, as an example of what slots players might do. But then I never go further. I, I, I think it would be an 
interesting idea if we did. Um, do you know any professional poker players? I've met a few, uh, both the kind that use poker winnings to pay for their playing other table games. I'm looking at you, Mark Duvall, from the You Can Bet on That Recreational Gambling podcast, uh, based on what he told me uh, uh, when we were in uh, Connecticut that one time at Foxwoods. Um, so if you are interested in You Can Bet on That, this is a show that's very friendly, family-friendly, recreational podcasting, not trying to sell any time, anything anytime, uh, uh, but they have a great uh, two hosts, Mark and Dr. Mike, uh, and th I've mentioned them before. I'll mention them again. Uh, you can bet on that.com, and I'll put the link in the uh, podcast show notes and the video description if you're interested in non-slots. These are the go-to guys, uh, honestly, and it's so... They get a lot of call-ins. Um, I called in uh, several times. Uh, in fact, on the last episode, they mentioned it, and they had a question about free slots play, and uh, I had an answer. So I sent them something, and we're likely to see that in the next episode or two uh, where you hear my voice there. Um, I'm not a regular, but uh, it's been half a dozen times in the last year and a half or so, something like that. Any case, um, they just have a question, a slots question, and I just figure I'll answer it for them, uh, for the people who call in there. Um, so let's stay focused on our article. Um, there's another kind of professional poker player that's the interesting example I want to talk about here. Um, not the ones that like Mark who, who are, you know, use poker to play, uh, you know, use those winnings to play other table games for markets, craps, a very social game. Everybody wins and everybody loses together. That's why. Um, so, uh, so, but there's another kind of professional poker player that's interesting. And uh, let's talk about that. Uh, so the other kind of professional gamblers uh, making a living at playing poker, uh, that, that, that this other group of professional gamblers making a living at playing slots, um, they're the ones that go to, you know, go on the poker circuit, right? They go to different casinos across the country, uh, maybe for only a few months out of the year. Yeah, them. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you must either have heard of them or know them. Uh, but there's a lot of misinformation out there. Uh, when I uh, research this, I mean, it's, it's not really misinformation it's more like people don't check um and they're like yeah sure i know people would do that and they told me all kinds of tight tall tales <laughs> and and they must all be true where um you know there's enough of those i think there's fewer people who make a living playing slots fewer than poker professional poker players which basically is you know there's a lot of those if we all know one or five you know there's a lot of those and um uh, so, so with more people and, uh, you know, the World Series of Poker where they're all on television, um, you know, you, they have interviews and they're, they're, you can reach them. Slots players tend to be quiet, uh, tend to stay hidden, right? But poker players, it's not part of the slots tournament, the, the poker tournament approach. Um, they get interviewed and they can be reached out to by people who are doing research to say, so how many tournaments do you go to? How much, um, you know, what, which ones do you go to? What's the stake? Uh, how much do you spend? How much do you make? And there's enough to have statistics and we all love statistics, right? Um, uh, <laughs> um, so could a slots player do something similar? And if so, how would it work? And also, would it work? Would it be a viable approach? And this is one of the topics not discussed in the article, and I thought it would be a good thing to touch on here. Um, so let's talk about that, but in a moment, because there's another topic I didn't discuss in the article. Um, uh, quit. So yes, uh, the the live chat. Uh, Leslie from Oregon is here. Uh, um, if so, if RS wouldn't mind answering some of the questions. Ah, um, yeah, yeah. Uh, you're here, RS. Okay, you're gonna get questions. This group asks questions, so please um, uh, try to answer some of them. the The Facebook groups are private. 
Um, you don't have to answer RS. You don't. You don't have to answer. Um, but I won't. Uh, Facebook groups are private, and um, even so, uh, that's why I'm only saying RS. Uh, but in any case, um, there looks like some questions. Um, <laughs> um, are people playing poker now? Sure. Uh, do they do it with masks on? Sure. Why not? Um, <laughs> I hope so. Um, but you know, I don't know that there's really tournaments, right? Uh, pe there's two kinds as I've been trying to go over here. Uh, there are two kinds of basically two genres, two kinds of poker players, which is those who, uh, I'll come back to this point, those that grind it out, those that, that go to the lo local casino, play locals and collect their money. Uh, and then there's those that go to major events. Now there hasn't been major events. So I kind of doubt that there, you know, what is the world uh, series of poker, WSOP.com? You know, what does it say on their website? Are they holding any? And that's, that's also part of that too. Can you be, can you win money at poker uh, as on the poker circuit when the poker circuit is shut down because of the pandemic? Can you make money at slots at casinos when the craziness you know where everything all the business practices of the casinos are disrupted right now so you know this is meant to be an article long term it is meant to be something that we can talk about starting in a couple of months um, it might be possible now i mean there's opportunities that exist at casinos um, some casinos if you can find them that are temporary and you know gives you a it might give you a clue of more subtle behavior that you weren't aware of at a casino after the pandemic, but it's kind of their go-to approach now. So you can learn stuff at the casinos now, but mostly I've just been staying away, and and I, you know, it seems like the wisest thing to do. Um, you know, this week we'll see what next week holds and next month holds. Um, so uh, I'm uh, glad to see the so, so much activity in the uh, live chat. I'll come back to them in a few minutes uh, and catch up then. Uh, so let me stay focused on uh, the article. So um, p poker players, some a, a group of po poker players, uh, they like to go out to, they do the poker circuit, right? They, they, they go once a year, a couple times a year, a few months out of the year, and the rest of the time they save their money and do, you know, live their lives. It kind of reminds me of uh, K through 12 teachers who take the summer off. You know, maybe they have a different job in the summer. Maybe they only work nine months out of the year. You know, there, there are people who, th that have that kind of lifestyle. And that's really what's going on here. This is what I didn't cover in the article was kind of the um, traveling gambler lifestyle even if it's only for a few months out of the year, maybe it's longer. So, uh, you know, might a winning slots player do something similar to what this group of um, poker circuit professional poker players do? And if so, how would that work and would it be a viable approach? And this is one of the topics not discussed in the article, so let's discuss it. But before that, um, I also didn't discuss in the article how much profit makes for a comfortable living. I mean, this is very personal. Uh, you know, I don't want to talk about medium incomes and I don't want to talk about, you know, what your needs are, but perhaps you can see why I didn't get into this in the article. How much is enough? It's a very personal question with all sorts of answers. Uh, and the details matter. Your details matter. But we can take this back to our professional poker player example. While it does not while it does vary widely and it depends on how much they play, there are some useful statistics out there if you search for them. In general, po professional poker players can make as little as $10,000 a year up to $1 million or even more. One source quotes professional poker players in Florida in a semi-top semi tier make, uh, I guess you might call this, you know, like we have a semi top tier for slots, loyalty programs, right? So second to the top tier. So call it the semi top tier. Uh, they make between $100,000 a year to $250,000 a year. But you know, this is rare. And we want to talk about something that's a little more common, right? There's always the exceptions out there. But let's talk about, let's talk about a quote, good, unquote, poker player. 
okay? And they have statistics for such an individual, however they def define that. And this is an article that I, um, uh, I'll, actually I'll make that available. I think I can do that right now in the, uh, drop that in to the live chat. Uh, yeah, there's an article, it's called uh, How Much Do Professional Live Poker Players Make? Um, and and so I'll put that into the podcast show notes and the video description at per usual. So for a good poker player, yearly income might exceed $50,000 and even approach $100,000. Uh, is that good enough? I mean, you know, what are your expenses? What have, what are you, what is your income? I, d please don't tell me. Uh, uh, but you know, between fifty and a hundred thousand dollars. You know, this is what a good poker player makes. And we, you know, we talk about statistics and slots, right? Um, even if it's not your state, what kind of return might a high limit poker machine provide? in other states where they actually have return statistics on slot machine denominations and is that return better for high limit or low limit right and so even if it's not your state this is still useful stuff so even though this is not slots this is poker still a good player can win between you know 50,000 and 100,000 up to 100,000 so this is this is where it gets interesting um what do they need to do to make that happen? If, if this analogy that I'm making between slots enthusiasts and, and poker players who, who know how to win, if this means anything, you know, to use this example, this bigger example of a, a larger group of people, um, how might a slots enthusiast learn to do what this group of poker players does? So professional tournament poker players might go without a big score for months and then win big at a single tournament. All right, as a slots enthusiast, does this sound familiar? You know, do you have a big win? You're losing for the night, you know? Um, do you lose and do you lose and lose at slots? Then more than recover your losses with a big jackpot? All while, you know, imagine doing this all while you're on the road traveling all over the country playing at different casinos and all for $50,000 to $100,000 per year, excluding expenses. So, you know, I think this is a real, you know, possibility of, of comparing what poker players do with what slots enthusiasts could do. So as a slots enthusiast, are you like the other type of professional poker player, the one that typically makes a whole lot less but plays at a local casino where their income is so steady it's practically an hourly rate? That's what Mark does. Uh, you know, it's income. It's steady income. Uh, if, you're contemplating, if you're contemplating making a living playing slots, however, you know, the, the article is five ways to, whichever one of those ways you're interested in, um, as SR, uh, what, and I discussed, uh, uh, these are basically your two choices. I mean, there's details, but there's, you know, hit the road or go to your local casino, you know, go for the big win with all the risk that implies or grind it out as a steady income locally. So let's, let's dig into the steady income approach first. First, of course, you need to win at slots. I don't mean, you know, lucky at slots, as helpful and as useful as, you know, that is. Uh, we all like that sort of thing. You know, it's part of what we do. But, but rather that you're skilled. You figured out how to win at a local casino, like SR has. I mean, that's, you know, you know R RS. As RS has offered in the live chat, you know, he's happy to explain, but this is about his casino. Okay. And my worry is if you wanted to move to a, and I mentioned this to him, uh, my worry is if you want to move, uh, to being full time, if you want to make a living at it, then you sort of have to question how firm some of that winning is. Uh, and I don't know if RS, uh, plays at a tribal casino 
because it's very unlikely a tribal, seaver, a tribal casino would ever be sold. But it happens every couple of years with commercial casinos. I mean, it has locally. Since, since uh, Horseshoe Cincinnati opened in 2013, in the last seven years, it's been sold twice. Actually, more times than that because – a commercial casino's got many owners, and some drop away and some stay, and then some get like a controlling interest with a block of them, and so they have more than 50%, you know, their 50.1% ownership, and then they get to call the shots. You know, it's all this uh, back and forth. So the, the major owners were resulted in a name change at the casino where you, uh, you know, saw the sign change. That's only happened, you know, there's been three big signs up. Okay, and one most recently earlier this year that was approved last year. So, uh, and that's only seven years. Uh, then there's, you know, you win taxable jackpots, you get the W2G, and then the W2G is the official name of the casino. And I've seen that change a couple of times because the conglomerate of the, you know, the, the organization that is in charge of the owners, you know, that can have some subtle shifts when, you know, groups of uh, uh uh, individuals, uh, owners, uh, sort of like take a controlling interest. So there's a lot going on. Not so much to worry about at a tribal casino, but otherwise. And as always, you know, as I talk about these things, it may sound as though that's a bad thing. It isn't. It's like the best thing ever. And I'll explain why in a minute. Um, I need to check back in with the live chat. Uh, it's, it's, uh, looks like a busy day. Um, Uh, so RS asks, uh, says there's something that he does want to do, which is enter a slot tournament. Oh man, I just, you know, you and I are the same RS. It might, it's a different casino. It might be a different winning strategy, but it is pattern recognition. And if somebody sits you down and says, okay, this is the time I want you to be here. This is the chair I want you to sit in. And this is the button I want you to press push, but you can push that button as much as you like only for the next, you know, three minutes. Uh, and then stop. And, you know, there's no control. There's no choice. You can choose to push the button or you could choose not to push the button. There's no coming back, you know, when the crowds are less than the casino. There's no coming back, you know, on another day in the morning, early. You know, there's there's no control. So I, I found slot tournaments very frustrating. I mean, please go uh, and, and, and see if your playing ability uh, matches, but you know, that's not skill anymore. If the skill is removed, okay, you're comparing how lucky the universe makes you, which you have no control over compared to the other slots players. But you know, it's worth doing. <laughs> um, uh, so Michael says in Blackhawk, it's been more than a couple of years since I met any players making a living at it. Um, yeah, there are, and and I I have topics, you know, content on this. Uh, it's when it's luck, it's luck. You know, you have no control, and maybe it'll happen, maybe it won't happen. Odds say it's unlikely, and that's it, right? Then there's you know it, but the physical reel on a slot machine. I keep on trying to find different ways to explain this to people. The physical reel on a slot machine isn't a roulette wheel. All right. I mean, assuming roulette wheels don't have a break, but, um, you know, the, it's not free spinning. A, a, a electric, uh, the, it is free spinning on a roulette wheel. It is not free spinning on a slot machine, but, you know, it kind of looks like maybe it is. No, it's controlled by electronic circuit board, which says stop here. You know, and so it stops there, and and uh, you know it's not it's not random. There, it's not fully random. There's luck involved, but as of 2012, with central servers, and a little bit before that, because it always had electronics for as long as it's had electronics since the 70s, so when circuit boards came out, uh, it's it's got some skill involved. There's something the casino has input on, but not all casinos choose to do that. Not all casinos do that, and you could have a casino where Nobody could win. RS couldn't win. I couldn't win. You know, we'd take it as a challenge maybe, but but there are casinos where nobody's winning. Not not because the casino 
uh, has set it up that way. I mean, there's like uh, the state of Washington, right? Uh, the casino has no say in, you know, the slot machine on the end of the row or second end of the row near the bar, you know, make that a winner so other people feel excited and go to some other slot machine and spend their money. You know, that kind of business practice that we can take advantage of can't happen in Washington, the state of Washington, because there's a tribal lottery system. There's a non-tribal, but there's a tribal lottery system. And its job is to connect to slot machines in casinos and run them. Right, the the casino changes the paper, the voucher paper when needed. Otherwise, the offsite is the control, and so you know that's much more luck based slot machine gambling than you know all the skill based stuff is. Maybe all of it has been removed, right? Um, some of the slots in New York are like that. Uh, the question is Rhode Island is it Rhode Island like that? Maybe it, you know, these, how are, how's the business set up? Uh, and so, um, all right. So talks, uh, RS talks a little bit about, about table games. Um, uh, Je Jeffrey says table games are still closed in Maine. Yep. Uh, let's see. Richard says, have met a high roller that did, in fact, claim winning $3 million in hand pays f uh, for last year. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, I, uh, yes. And I have to, okay, so Richard says such and such, not such and such, but the, the person says $3 million in hand pays. See, that's that's missing key information, all right? Um did they win a profit? You know, uh, also, uh, and, and we could talk a little bit about, about uh, um, statistics too. Um, you know, can you imagine spending $3 million? You know, your top uh, denomination, the top bill that you can use is a $100 bill. All right, so can you imagine putting, what is that, uh, 30,000 bills into a machine? I mean, one, two, what's, what's 30,000 seconds? You know, this, this is months of just handling money you put into the machine. Yeah, just consider that kind of life. Um, Steve says, do poker players uh, put money away for the future? That's a question. Probably not. I think uh, they're in the now. Um, uh, Steve, actually, the article uh, that I uh, put in there has some great words on that. Uh, it has some great topics on that. It made me realize I'm, how glad I was that we've been talking here about money management. Uh, they are all about money management. They get bored at a tournament where they have to stay awake for you know, 23 hours, 41 hours straight. And it's mostly just boring, but they have to stay aware and focused, you know, on the game as it proceeds, game after game after game after game for days. And they get bored and they're just like, could it be just be over? I'm going to make, you know, Texas hold them. I'm all in. And then they're done. And they're like, oh, I should have been more patient. They have to manage their money and also you know, save their money from previous year's winnings until the next time that tournament happens a year later. And so they both have to live on that money and keep the entry fee for the next tournament, next number of tournaments. So that's a life, and it revolves around money management. Uh, Let's see. Uh, love today's uh, live chat. It's very lively. Um, da, da, da. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so there was a topic in the article uh, that, I, that I wrote about uh, that I didn't cover, and I'm not going to cover it here either, which is taxes. All right? Uh, you know, if you're a professional gambler, status with IRS, that's... Um, a section or two um, uh, in the article, uh, not to give too much away. Um, you know, that's a business. And, um, you know, I, I have a business. 
you know, I'm not a professional gambler. Uh, I've chosen not to be, uh, but um, professional slots gambler. But I do have a business. So, again, I don't want to talk about the article. Uh, uh, but taxes, I just, you know, I, I've, I've done that before, and I wished I hadn't touched it with a 10-foot pole. Um, my personal experience has been, I, uh, and I'll mention this in a minute, um, I, I, I got to top tier uh, at Horseshoe Cincinnati in the last six weeks of 2013. They had opened, I believe it was in March of that year. So that was their first year. And, uh, we, and we'll, I'll talk about that as well. But uh, six weeks, all right, 51 taxable jackpots, one of them as high as $27,000, right? Uh, and, I'll, and I got the top tier. Uh, seven stars in that six weeks. I, I mean, I'd been there a, half a dozen times. It's all in the book, uh, exactly how many uh, and when and all that. Um, but uh, I had uh, uh, won 51 tax, taxable jackpots basically in the last six weeks. And, and I had a few points. I was still in the first tier. Um, I, I wasn't even close to getting to the second tier in the loyalty program. Uh, and, you know, by the end of the year, six weeks later, Boom, uh, arrow, fong, arrow direct fong is here. Excellent. Hi, been a while. Uh, and when I hit, you know, seven stars, uh, it was all just such a new experience. Uh, but I think about sometimes, um, you know, just so much I didn't know. Uh, and I think about sometimes, what if I started going to that casino when it opened in March 2013? And what if that first year wasn't the last six weeks where I got the top tier. What if it had started in March and I spent the whole year doing that? You know, how many, if, let's say it was just the same. And I think it was, judging by people, people's reactions. But let's say it was exactly the same. Uh, March, third month, so basically it was uh, nine months instead of six weeks. And nine months is, let's see, that would be maybe six, six weeks, right? Yeah, about that. Six, six weeks. So uh, I could have had six times 51. Let's call it six times 50 hand pays, 300 hand pays, right? Six times $30,000 in profit, right? So $180,000 in profit. Uh, and inst and I, I got the top tier, so that was seven hundred fifty thousand dollars in points. So I had cycled my bankroll at seven. I I cycled bankrolls to seventy seven hundred fifty thousand dollars worth. There was a few free credits, but in six weeks, how many? How much do you get? So, and and that first year, actually, I went to like eight hundred thousand something. Um, so let's call it by the number 750,000 and it was let's say it was six times that we're talking about five million dollars the first year if I had done it the for since it had opened and rather than just the last six weeks I mean the point I'm trying to make here is what would have happened to my taxes because I found out something terrible on my taxes early in 2014 when I started doing them I had city taxes I was not even fully aware that I'd had city taxes. I, I guess I, you know, sort of, I, I started there the previous year. First year I would have had them was 2013, and the second year was 2014, because I moved there in 2012. And, you know, it was all sort of like, huh, what? I never had them before in my life. Can you imagine? $5 million where they don't accept gambling deductions, just like state, the state of Oklahoma doesn't or up to the state of Oklahoma state of Oklahoma has a gambling deduction for non-residents of I think it's 16 or seventeen thousand dollars and that's it and after that you pay taxes so you can you imagine my paying two percent on five million dollars yeah you know surprise uh, so uh, I'm not going to talk about taxes and that's my 10 minute rant on taxes <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Yeah. Uh, thank you, Michael. I, uh, Michael says the not a roulette wheel um, is a good description. Um, uh, thank you. I've been working on these things. Um, I'm, try- I'm trying to get to know uh, my audience. I mean, I know the people I play with, right? And we talk and chat, um, but I really have to sort of ask questions. And so I've decided to start a weekly poll. All right. I'm going to send out a poll each week. Um, when I think of a relevant question, and I put the link earlier in the live chat, and I'll put the link um, in in uh, the show notes and the video description. Please uh, click on that. It's one question, multiple choice answers. What kind of slot machines do you play? This is not about the game theme. This is about high limit, low limit, progressive, the class two bingo style that you know, you might find it at a tribal casino, but perhaps you don't go to tribal casinos. I'm trying to find out which kind of games you like to play. Other questions, other polls that I'll have. Uh, oh, and if you got, if you're on the email newsletter, if you signed up at professorsots.com, uh, be on my list. Not the subscription on YouTube, but the subscription on my website. Uh, uh, email list. Um, You got that question today in this morning's email. I send out a weekly email, Uh, but then it's also in every Facebook group. So please, you know, take a look and answer the question. Um, Multiple choice answer, uh, whichever is appropriate, can be all of them. Many people, for many people, it's all of them. Uh, And that's perfectly fine. I'd like to get an idea what you guys do precisely and and more of a national average than Southwestern Ohio. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, RS, uh, I know I know it's your first time here, but um, uh, some of the points that we've made, and it may have been too long since I talked about uh, those slot machines that have based on have slot machine game themes on television shows. Uh, you know how they pay royalties, and somebody's got to pay for that. And I'm pretty sure players are at least one of the groups, maybe the only group that actually pays for that licensing. To get from the show that's expensive stuff multi-million dollar stuff um so uh yes i agree with leslie thank you rs um wayne uh, uh sorry it's in sacramento uh, uh arrow direct fong uh surrounded by uh, tribal casinos absolutely that's what um you have card games in a uh, tribal casino not that i <laughs> that you don't know this but others people may not uh know that C- california has tribal casinos only uh and then there's card games uh, card card rooms where they just play table games. Uh, s- casinos, the host, what is their function? Am I being followed? Uh, they wish me luck sometimes. What they do they do for casino or players? Um, right, so if you've had a host, uh, the host is a lovely, lovely thing, okay? Um, I've had them cut through a crowd of people who are all, you know, as they walk by, the people around them are like, oh, could you, you know, and they kind of pluck at their clothes, you know, and stuff, and they just force their way through because they need to get to me within 30 seconds of my putting my player's club card into the slot machine, all right? They're dedicated to, you know, they're they're the host of someone, and they, you know, the, the look on the faces of the people, they just walk past, you know, to get to me because they're there for me, you know, when it's my host or if it's your host, they're there for you. Um, I have nothing bad to say about hosts. Um, and besides which, you know, they can't track you. They don't know what you're doing. I mean, they're, they're trying to get you a good meal. They're trying to get you, you know, do you like baseball or football? You know, they, they ask questions um, to try to help you to learn what they can give you, what they have, and fight for you when all the hosts get together and divvy up. You know, it's like a good concierge on a, you know, street in, you know, Miracle Mile downtown Chicago, and all the concierge are like, okay, I've got this and I've got this. There's been movies about concierge, you know, doing deals uh, on getting the best stuff for their people. And if they know what their people want, they prepare those sorts of things. And that's how I think of hosts. Um, They don't need to track your behavior in order to do something about it. That's what electronics are for. And I kind of doubt that, too, because with the articles that I read, and I have articles I'm working on to come out about the slot machine manufacturers who make more than just slots. They also make these uh, 
enterprise systems, the the software that runs kiosks and and the whole casino really, uh, you know everything from communication to uh, the central server to to you know a call system uh, f- to get the slot attendants to the machine with the blinking light quick and and all of that. Um, yeah, they 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 give you uh, as Dave said, they give you free stuff. Hosts give you free stuff, but they give you free stuff that you're looking for. And sometimes the free stuff is what you've asked for, that sort of thing. Um, but if you go to the, you know, the things that you're talking about are more the electronics. Uh, and and even those are not that great because as I was saying, I, I, I go t- to these reports, these legally required to be clear and easy to read financial statements that get technical a little with their offerings and explain what they have or don't have. And it's not real time. So, um, <laughs> Harold Trekfunk says, like, what, Sam Rich? No, like, what, um, uh, football? Do you want to go to your local football stadium or do you want to go to your local baseball stadium? Do you, you like hockey? You know, downtown Cincinnati has got all three. Which one do you want? You know, and how many? And, uh, hotels, you know, the biggest problem, there's a host section, um, and I should make an article on that in my book. It's, it's in my book um, about all the things that you could talk about. I mean, they, they're looking for ideas, and, and they want something to get something appropriate for you. Top tier, uh, I never got particularly good at, at asking for the hard stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'll let that continue a uh, conversation. Uh, yeah, uh, always tip your host. Uh, and your slot attendant. Sometimes the host has to put it in the kitty because they sometimes, like if, like floor managers can't accept tips, but they can't accept it on behalf of all the slot attendants. They just they themselves can't accept it. Just one of the things you'll, you'll learn. Um, okay, so hey, um, uh, there's a lot of questions about hosts. Maybe uh, on the next time I do something on hosts, how about does that sound? Uh, let's get back to um, uh, making a living. Uh, Okay. Um, uh, right. So, uh, so we talked about steady income. Uh, yes, steady income works if you figured out how to win at a local casino or at least one that's within a reasonable driving distance. Um, uh, this approaches uh, what we often talk about here in these live streams. We talk about money management techniques and winning slot strategies and first finding, then taking advantage of common casino business practices like my five pull approach uh, that collects the tastes some casinos like to give out when uh, players first sit down at a slot machine. Uh, and then, you know, I'm saying stop when you collect it and move on and collect and collect and collect and make it your strategy. Uh, play a little and then move on. Uh, and that's all laid out very carefully. We've talked about that. But this is a, one of the steady income approaches that some poker players use. Uh, you know, the steady approach is what some play, players use to make a living or perhaps only supplement their income. And perhaps so do you. We've talked and talked about this as well as, um, and, and we'll still have a lot to talk about uh, when it comes to skill-based, a skill-based winning approach to slots. But what if you want to try the other way, the the other poker approach? What if you want to try that with slots? What if you want to win big, perhaps only once a year? How might slots enthusiasts go about doing this? I didn't discuss this in my article, so let's discuss it now. For two years in a row, and I touched on this already, for two years in a row, I made $30,000, a $30,000 profit playing slots. $30,000 one year, $30,000 the next year. Uh, This was during the last six weeks of 2013 and through the end of August in 2014. This is the time I refer to as my nine months of winning 90 taxable jackpots. And the highest of those was was $27,000. I also won a car. I go over this time of my life in my book, Learning to Win, available on Amazon as softcover, ebook, and audiobook. It's also available for less uh, as a PDF version on my professorslots.com website. I will confess that I was an idiot in how I was playing slots at the beginning of those nine months. I knew so little. I shudder to think how many times I casually lost thousands and even tens of thousands of dollars through poor 
money management skills and stupid approaches when playing $100 denomination slot machines. On the other hand, I learned what happens when you do that. So I got better. I learned to be better, much better. And I've taken it as my task to tell you all about it. So you know better too. Why was I winning so much? Okay, that's the fundamental question here. For me, during that nine months, why was I winning so much? Luck had little to do with it, and my bankrolls were not huge. My bankroll was just reasonable for playing a two or three credit, $5 or $10, $5 or $10 denomination slot machine. You should be able to answer this question by now. What's 100 bets on a three credit, $5 denomination slot machine? What's 100 bets on a $2 $10, two credit, $10 denomination, denomination slot machine. Right, that's bank rolls between $1,500 and $2,000. I have some spelling errors in my notes. Um, yet, what was the casino business practice that I was taking so much advantage of? Let me tell you. Let me tell you my winning slot strategy that is the biggest money maker of all. I was playing at a new casino where there had never been a casino before. I've mentioned this, but that's it. That's what all the winning I was doing was about, alongside perhaps a couple dozen of us doing the same thing at Horseshoe Cincinnati when it first opened in 2013. This was before they sold themselves and their great reputation for a top dollar price to the next owner that drove them and their slots players into the ground. All right, this is total business practice. New casino, never been one there before. Need to educate a large population on what it means to win at a casino and hook them in and then take advantage like we're taking advantage. Only they take advantage of us or they try to. So we turn the wheels on them. Anyway, if you want to make a living playing slots, then you need to grind it out at your local casino. Unless your local casino is new, like mine was, the only casino within ours, and located in a population center where the new casino has a decent chance of making money from a bunch of people that have rarely gone to a casino before. That's how it was for me, when I could barely help myself making $30,000 a year, my first year being only six weeks long. If, po if poker players want to win big, they need to locate several poker tournaments and improve their skills until they might possibly win at one of them. As slots enthusiasts, if you want to win big, it's not the mega jackpot of a wide area progressive slot machine. For one thing, those are going away. In the last year, did you know downtown Las Vegas and the Strip have both removed their mega bucks slot machines? Too much legal liability for the casinos involved, apparently, despite its popularity with players. Instead, for slots enthusiasts, the best way I know to win big is to hit the road. Go find recently opened casinos which fit the above criteria and play slots at them endlessly. But be warned, you may have to live in a van at first. You might eventually be able to live at their casino at their hotel, at their casino, with endlessly comped rooms and casino, fo and casino food. But don't count on that. Not if you're winning. At Horseshoe Cincinnati in 2014, they obviously weren't tracking how much I was winning and only how much I was spending. Comps everywhere. Free slots play and all kinds of electronics, appliances, whatnot. But at Foxwoods in 2018... They were tracking how much I was winning, as well as how much I was spending. And I was winning more than I was spending. I couldn't get a comp to save my life. Not even to, a bit off on my hotel room, and I was there for three days. Because I wasn't winning more than I was losing. I was winning more than I was spending by several thousand dollars. So again, these days, with the latest and greatest of loyalty programs, such as they have become, you may need to live in a van, an RV, or something. All right? So again, let's check in with the live chat, see how we're doing. Great show today, guys. I mean, you guys make the show. It's great to see this kind of interaction. Um, 
I will seriously considering having the next show be about hosts. Uh, seems like that was definitely a topic today in the in the live chat. I mean, um, so let's see. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, Richard's got some good information there. Uh, uh, mail flyers, hosts call you. They have access to your statistics and your royalty play. Um, if they don't know you, you have to win a lot the first visit and then beg. Um, yeah, yeah. They uh, One of the things that gets very hard, and we'll talk about this, I think, if I do have an episode on... Things are getting busy, okay? Uh, there's so many topics to talk about. Um, I'm ramping up on videos I'm, I'm putting out. You might have noticed I put out 12 in the last week, okay? That, that won't be 12 because I was getting caught up. Uh, but in this next week, I'm getting working to a regular schedule. I think with this live show being one video, three other videos, one of those would be a state by state on Tuesday. And then I'm, I'm hoping to steady out, get steady at two more videos, four videos a week total. Saturday, the live show, Sunday, Tuesday for the state by state and Thursday. And I'm hoping to make Thursday like an ongoing series of, uh, you know, uh, top seven, my, my seven winning strategies and, you know, do that for seven weeks and then, or something like that. Um, just try to find a series, short series all on Thursdays. That's, that's kind of my plan. In any case, um, uh, I'll try to, I'll consider talking about hosts next week, but every week is becoming like this huge thing. So we'll see. Uh, John, is a question for me. Um, yeah, if, you, if you're talking in the chat and you're talking to somebody else, that's great. But if you mention my name, my eye sort of spots it. Uh, Michael says, hey, John, does it make sense to ask if there has been a big change in which computers make slots go along with, in which, oh, in which companies make slots to go along with computers? Uh, no, uh, they all do. Uh, and I have articles out there. These are two articles that I do. I, I chose the top two companies. Um, I need to add one for class two machines, the VGT company. But I so far I do uh, scientific games and uh, uh, what is it? IGT, uh, International Gaming uh, Technologies. And those are the two big players for class three type games, Vegas style slot machines. Uh, and I have articles for last year, but their, their financial statements came out just before the pandemic this year and i need to rewrite those articles i rewrite them uh every year but uh, if you go look for that on my website you'll find them uh and that gives you a tone i thought one might just be kind of you know maybe they're just doing one thing so i decided to do two of the main companies and if they're similar then that's fine i i, I have recently decided i need to add vgt because they they do class three but uh certainly igt and scientific games make the software in fact they're they have uh what they call business segments and this might be actually the topic for next week um, because i plan on doing those articles soon uh they have a lottery section a gaming machine section and then they have like their software uh, section where they uh, offer these systems uh, f to help casinos uh, and that's basically the three elements of most of those companies um, yeah uh, getting close to our time uh, let's see answered that question talk between uh, <laughs> I have a five pull method but Dave says uh, but I'm still an idiot I use the 500 pull method <laughs> <laughs> well, that works too sometimes, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> not, not for me. Uh, okay. Uh, how much you tip is up to you. Um, yeah, $100 bills usually work for me. Uh, I, I try to range it. I, I probably don't give enough. When you get a taxable jackpot, um, you get, uh, you know, it's $1,200 or more, so I figure a 20. Um, but then I, uh, you have a slot attendant who um uh you know takes care of the paperwork but then they have someone who checks so i give a 20 to each of them uh the floor managers usually will come along when the slot when the jackpot jackpot's over ten thousand dollars and if it's over ten thousand dollars i give out hundreds um for a host uh you know they, they've asked me if i want a meal and and uh, i i just sort of take that as a service i make sure i tip at the meal uh because uh, you know, just because it's free to me doesn't mean the slot attendant that the server doesn't deserve a tip, and that's cash. So a hundred dollar meal might cost me twenty bucks, or if I don't get it comped, it would cost me twenty bucks. So you know, 
<laughs> Bobby's Burgers or something. <laughs> so so either way, you know, I, I pay. Um, hey, Neil Go, aloha. Uh, um, welcome. Uh, <laughs> um, you're crack, you would crack me up, Dave. A 500 pull method. Wow. Um, let's see. Right. Longer question. Uh, right. Danny has a question. I was wondering what your thoughts are on the stats at Vegas tightening up their slots over the last three months due to the corona. They haven't. I mean, they have and they haven't. Uh, I have an article um, that kind of talks about this. Uh, uh, the stats in Nevada, Las Vegas, um, are reported by the casinos more than any other state. They're reported weekly. But the reported by the casino weekly, but reported to the world on their website monthly. So the requirement of having an 85 percent turnout, or actually I think it's 75 for Nevada, but whatever the return statistics is, they have to meet that during the week. So what they do is they turn up the odds for the locals during the week and turn down the odds for all the people coming from California and everywhere else on the weekends, where the weekends are technically from about 10 o'clock on Friday to about 10 o'clock on Monday, uh, in the morning on Friday, in the morning on, on Monday, and that's basically the weekend. So don't play then. And I have an article on all of this and where to, you know, uh, follow, find out where the locals play because they know best. Maybe you are a local. Um, uh, but what you're saying is one of those things we saw during the pandemic, and I'll keep going for another minute um, or so uh, just to answer these questions. The pandemic has been showing two responses from the casino. One is they tighten up. Uh, the other one is, um, you know, they need to make money, but they t decide not to drive away their customers, which is what they're doing with the casinos where they just tighten. The uh, the casinos that have, I think, the best approach are those that let the player win, but the wins are smaller. We just want to win, all right? If it's if it's was a thousand dollars and now it's a hundred dollars, gee, you know, <laughs> I don't know the players notice, but not winning anything at all where they just give their money is just a horrible experience. So I think you might be looking at um, just smaller wins. I hope so. Uh, and read my article uh, about um, uh, visiting Las Vegas. I don't think I call it visiting Las Vegas because it's a movie. <laughs> um, uh, thank you, Lois. Um, I appreciate it. Uh, hopefully I think that's about it. Um, uh, really densely packed show today. Um, I appreciate you giving me an extra two minutes, um, and I will see you next week. Uh, the last thing I really wanted to say about this whole uh, making a living at slots is um, I'm doing it. And, uh, well, I guess I'll just leave it at that. Some of you know more details. Um, I'm going to hang up now, but I'll be on the live chat for another couple of minutes. You take care.